uh, FMDQ, Securities Exchange, OTC Securities Exchange is China's television's data partner when it comes to the FX and the debt market. Of course, the organization is uh, holding its fifth anniversary this week, and tomorrow, Wednesday, is the big day for that. So that we're covering all of that for you this week, bringing you some insight into the past five years, and we're rolling back beyond the last five years into looking at the pre uh, FMDQ years uh, as far as the debt market is concerned. Let's get a bit of this conversation uh, are going as we cross over to FMDQ Exchange Place in downtown Lagos uh, via Skype. Uh, Tony Sun is joining us. She is the CEO at Emerging Africa Group. Uh, until then, just uh, about a month or two ago, she was a CEO at the Investment Bank United Capital. She spent the last two, two, 20 years or a little bit above that uh, on Market Street in investment banking, corporate finance, and all of that. So Tony Sunday understands the business of deal making. Toyi, it's good to see you on the program. Good morning. Thank you. Thank good you. Good morning. It's great to be with you this morning. Thank you. It's nice to see you, madam. We understand uh, this is very great week for FMDQ, OTC Securities Exchange, in bringing uh, the debt market into place and helping the economy, including the FX market. You spent north of two decades on Market Street. So you understand this business. Give us your views of what has been achieved uh, since over the last five years, if you look at the pre-FMDQ days. Okay. Thank you. Um, I need to start by congratulating um, Coco Onodili and the excellent team at the FMDQ on their fifth anniversary. Prior to the advent of the FMDQ, we had a market that was largely dominated by equities. So contrary to the natural structure in most um, um, functional markets where the market actually has a huge volume of debt relative to equity, the Nigerian market prior to the advent of FMDQ was uh, largely an equities market. Um, and the debt um, capital instruments in the market were largely just the sovereign and sub-sovereign. The um, commercial market, um, commercial paper markets was um, comatose. The um, corporate um, bond market was um, not particularly active, and um, both in terms of depth and in terms of um, volume. So um, the coming of the FMDQ was very welcome. I think it's one of Nigeria's more successful um, reform initiatives. And with the coming of the FMDQ, we had the reactivation of the previously comatose um, commercial paper market. We're looking at a market that is um, close to a trillion naira now in volume. Um, we had the corporate debt market also becoming reactivated. Um, we had um, a lot of innovation that the FMDQ has brought into play. So one of them, for example, is the I and E um, FX market, that is invest in investors and exporters. Um, FX market that provides ready access to um, foreign exchange for um, investors and for exporters. That has eased, you know, the logjam that um, was hampering the activities of the manufacturing sector, for example, that was also discouraging international investors from playing in our market. That's another one of the um, initiatives that FMDQ has brought into the market that has really helped the market. And there are quite a few other. I know that FMDQ also um, collaborated with the SEC um, and the Debt Management Office with respect to the recent launch of um, green bonds in our market. Yes, um, so, Tony, so, that's exactly uh, where I'm going. Uh, sorry to cut you off there. The importance of having a very robust and active and liquid debt market platform. If you look at the last few years, it's been very, really tough for the sovereign, which is the government, uh, to meet its obligations in terms of salaries and wages and financing infrastructure. Uh, just imagine if the FMDQ was not there to help the various euro bonds and even infrastructure bond has been done by private sector, Lagos State, for example, and a few others over the last five years. Absolutely. You're totally correct. So a vibrant, um, functional, well-equipped, transparent, and well-structured debt capital market is critical to the health of um, our economy. Um, 
It provides a source of long-term capital, patient capital, for both the sovereign and the sub-sovereigns, and that would help with respect to infrastructure provision and other development initiatives of government. We also have, you know, private sector investors are able to access this market to um, have investment opportunities that will help them to build wealth over time. Um, in terms of risk, um, debt capital instruments are at the lower risk end of the market. Um, for the sovereigns are risk-free. The sub-sovereigns um, and the corporate debts are lower risk, relatively lower risk instruments. So for older members of the society, for example, um, debt capital market is very important for them to access investment opportunities that are more suited to their risk appetite. Um, companies also can access long-term patient capital rather than going to the banks and, and taking short-term money to meet long-term development uh, objectives or expansion business, um, um, business expansion needs. These corporates can now access the debt capital market and, 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 and structure their um, financing in a more efficient manner. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know that entrepreneurs um, like to retain, you know, a significant stake in their businesses. So they don't have to give up all the equity to raise long-term capital anymore because they can access the debt capital market. Yes, you, you, yes, you, you're touching the right uh, tone there. Uh, Tony, when you talk about that, we've seen Dangote Cement, we've seen Nigerian breweries, we've seen Forte Oil, we've seen a number of uh, uh, big uh, companies within our space here approaching the FMDQ with commercial papers and, and others, even at the central bank and the MPC, try to rejig the, the system for more credit to the private sector. Then we've seen these folks, uh, uh, the FMDQ, providing that platform, that gateway for them. But we need to do more in the mid to long term. What more would you like to see in terms of development within this space? Okay, I look forward to a more product um, innovation. So we've had innovation. One of the innovations, for example, was also the, the um, FX um, futures OTC market. Um, we need to see more derivative instruments. I'm happy that FMDQ has put in place our first um, central clearing house. Um, we need to see more derivative instruments available on this market for risk management purposes for investors. We would like to see um, greater progress in terms of um, the non-interest capital market um, products that um, provide an avenue for ethical investors that have ethical concerns. We would like to see more of a deepening of the green bonds market, for example, because there's a huge pile of international funding that is available for clean, um, as it were, clean, um, clean securities, so to speak. So I'm sure you are also aware that when you look at Nigeria's, um, Africa's, one of Africa's major problems remains the power, um, the power um, gap, huge, huge energy gap. And that is also a gap for Nigeria. Now, um, clean energy is one of the alternative energy. Clean energy is one of the initiatives that Emerging Africa, we are partnering with um, international investors to, to advance and develop in this market. Now, that's a space that also with the green bonds and, you know, similar instruments, we can then begin to access funding um, from the capital market. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, exciting times are ahead.